Welcome to this Tech Talk, Sheep and Cattle Yard Design. Our speaker today is Ben White from Condinen Group. Ben is an agricultural engineer, Condinen Group's research manager, and the editor of Farming Ahead magazine. Ben comes from a farming background and has worked for the group for the last 20 years. Ben has extensive experience in delivery of research and has expertise in the areas of farming technology, grain storage, precision farming, engine technology, seeding, spraying and harvesting equipment. Ben and his colleagues have authored numerous research reports and case studies about sheep and yard design. I welcome Ben. Thanks, Ben. Today we're going to talk about investing in livestock infrastructure, incorporating handlers and or crushers. Uh, in particular, we'll have a look at some sheep handlers and we'll talk about some case studies and give you some examples of people who've made investments in yards and handlers and how they've done it. And we'll do a quick run through on cattle crushers uh, as a bit of a buyer's guide. Now, some of this material has come from a report that we conducted uh, in 2019 around sheep infrastructure. Uh, and what we've done there is put together a series of case studies with some detailed information on different growers and, and how they've gone about selecting yards uh, and yard designs and why they've done it and sort of what suits them and their needs. From a sheep infrastructure investment perspective, there's a bit of a checklist we could do well to run through um, before spending our hard-earned money. Uh, checklist should include things like planning design, make sure that Yards are well built and, and well designed and they're designed according to requirement. They're not just straight off a plan that uh, is, has been put together by a company and uh, in a one size fits all because as we know, that's rarely the case. Need to think about things from a long term perspective, allow for expansion, choice of materials, curves. I'll talk about diamonds, installation, races, coverage of the yards, latching, making sure we've got power, air and water, concrete and loading ramps. Now, before we spend our hard-earned money on uh, yards or any infrastructure uh, to do with livestock, it's worth making sure that we get the plan and the design absolutely spot on. And I think one of the things that we need to do is, uh, is make sure that it's going to suit our needs and also suit any existing infrastructure that might be there. Um, now, most of these plans will take a number of iterations. Don't be disheartened if you don't get it first go or you can't think of how to uh, get a particular design. In a lot of cases, most manufacturers will help you uh, to come up with ideas as to how you might want that design to work. But I'd suggest that you know, you, you're really going to get it first, first go and you probably will need to maybe have a think about some alternatives and also look at other yards to, uh, to give you inspiration as to, to you know, maybe what might work in your scenario. One of the things that uh, is absolutely essential is thinking long term, making sure that uh, you know that the yards you're building um, uh, are built uh, with a long term view, a long term perspective. Make sure that the yards uh, will accommodate uh, what you might want to do in the future. That you've got room to uh, to expand those yards, and that might mean you know, make sure that you've got some panels that are removable or some sections of a fence that are removable. Or you can also fit other infrastructure around those yards uh, in, in, in the future that, uh, that mightn't be there already. Allowing for expansion is something that uh, you know, is often overlooked and, and we get very focused on, on the yards that we're trying to build uh, at the moment uh, and not so much about what we might want to build further on. And I suppose uh, allowing for expansion means that we've got some options and some gateways or some panels that can be removed so that yards can be expanded later on and also that we've got the area for those expanded yards to fit into. Choice of materials is always an interesting one. Obviously steel is most commonly used now, although we do see uh, in this instance, for example, uh, old gates with tin panels in them, uh, you know, they were perfectly, uh, perfectly good and in good shape and they've been reused. So um, think about choice of materials and, and obviously uh, steel materials need to be galvanised uh, so that they wear well and don't corrode uh, prematurely. Curves are a mainstay of, of most yards and the bugle horn sort of design has uh, has served us well over the years and continues to do so. And there's a few iterations of, uh, of that bugle and curve design that, that probably uh, we see in most sets of yards these days. It's uh, the, the, the curve tends to draw sheep around uh, in a nice constant flow and means that uh, you know, pushing and, and forcing pens 
uh, don't have to be uh, uh, pushed so hard and, and can actually probably be a little bit larger than they have been previously. Diamonds are a new feature in, uh, in a lot of yards and we, we're seeing more and more diamond, uh, diamond sort of uh, pens in, incorporated in the yards. Uh, most of these are fitted with 360 degree gates, which means that we can swing and, uh, and shift sheep from one pen to another uh, of any of the four that are on, on the corners of the diamond. So uh, I think that uh, you know, diamonds are something that uh, we're seeing both in yards and also shearing shed designs. Races is uh, they're the business end of uh, any sets of yards, and you know we've got all sorts of uh, ideas and, and uh, uh, designs, I suppose, from the single sort of race as we've got on the right hand side there to the the double race uh, on the left. Um, all concreted, obviously. Uh, you might want uh, gates that can be open from either end. Uh, in the case in the, in the left hand side, that uh, that's a feature that that race has. Also. Um, midway gate so that uh, you know if you haven't got quite a full race uh, you can uh, drop a midway gate and uh, and stop livestock running backwards and forwards uh, up and down the race and, and uh, certainly uh, that's a design that is becoming more prevalent. One of the things that we've seen uh, recently is, um, is a, a more elevated design in, in races so that the sheep are lifted up towards you a little bit more uh, and also a, a toe um, gap underneath the race so that you can get in nice and close to the sheep. Um, it doesn't add a lot to the to the cost of the race, um, but does make them more usable. Cover is something that uh, is worth, uh, worth its weight in gold. Uh, I think uh, particularly in, uh, in areas where a lot of work is done during the summer months, um, cover is, uh, is absolutely essential uh, to, to be able to work throughout the day. And equally in, in cold environments, you can um, Put a cover over and and, uh, and stop rain and and you know continue to be able to if you've got dry sheep continue to be able to work uh, without too much of uh, an encumbrance. There's an absolute multitude of latch designs and uh, what we need to do is make sure we've got a latch that's easy to operate in the position that it it's placed and also that it can't be bumped too readily by stock and uh, you know with the risk of boxing stock up. Uh, when they're in the yard. So, so latch design is important. Um, it also needs to be uh, easy to function and, and uh, you know, not too stiff. It needs to be nice and, and uh, uh, easy to, uh, to open if it's under load, for example, in a forcing pen. Uh, and also uh, on the, in the context of, of latches and gates, I've just uh, popped a little image there of their 360 degree latches, which are most common in those uh, in diamond uh, configurations in yards these days. So. When it comes to gates, there's a fair bit happening. There's a lot, uh, you know, we use them a lot in yards. We need to make sure that they function really well. Now, power, water, and air are all things we need in the yards these days to run things like scale heads, uh, tag readers, sheep handlers, um, and uh, sometimes animal husbandry equipment. So make sure that we've either got access to those or they can be easily routed throughout the yards because uh, uh, it's becoming more common, uh, particularly uh, electrical access points. Uh, in a lot of cases, these can be run uh, hanging down from the ceiling or from the roof of the shed if it's under cover um, to be able to uh, uh, both provide access and, and also uh, provide that um, in most places that you're going to work within the yards. Obviously, uh, high traffic areas need to be concreted, so races, uh, drafting points uh, around sheep handles, etc. Um, Make sure you've got a nice rough sort of surface there, uh, but also the ability to be able to clean out is uh, is important as well. So um, not too rough, I suppose, is is the key. Um, one of the other things that uh, makes outer yard cleaning uh, a little easier is perhaps incorporating some concrete in the gravel base and uh, and patting that down and doing that uh, doing that properly when the yards are first installed. This can mean cleaning out is a lot. Uh, more simple um, and just running a, a, a small bucket over it you'll be able to extract most of the uh, manure and and, uh, and dust and dirt uh, that might be or might have built up in the yards and of course over time uh, you know this material can uh, can corrode the bottoms of posts out so uh, pretty important to clean yards out uh, making those out of yards uh, you know with a nice firm base uh, will certainly improve the ability to keep them clean Loading ramps are one of the things that we uh, often overlook when we're building a new set of yards, uh, but they're very important, obviously, for getting uh, stock in and out of the property. Um, if you've got a slope, uh, certainly uh, the example on the right there gives us an idea of how that can be used 
uh, to your advantage. Um, being able to, to maintain uh, operation on, on land um, uh, and also you know, for, the, for the person operating uh, or, or filling the truck, um, it's got to be uh, it's got to be safe. So on the left hand side, we can see um, uh, a new proway um, race uh, that conforms to uh, some of the latest standards, and those standards are available online. Um, worth having a look at those uh, just to make sure that uh, you know trackies are safe, and, and also you know those that are working with them to load trucks and or unload trucks are also safe. So uh, gang gangways and, and uh, handrails are obviously important. Uh, and certainly uh, can can make uh, the the job of loading stock on and off trucks a lot easier. When it comes to uh, to yards, one of the most important things is obviously installation. Making sure that the you know once a design has been done well, that the installation is also done well. Um, you know, little things like just making sure that the uh, that the concrete around the posts is uh, is a little bit proud, so that uh, you know again corrosion isn't an issue. Uh, small things like that can actually make yard workability and maintenance and cleanliness a, a lot better. Des you know, design is absolutely essential, as too is the layout. And so, you know, often it's uh, it's worth engaging uh, a company that specialises in this to uh, to help you make those designs. Um, and then, in a lot of cases, you know, they'll either install the yards or give you the components and a really good set of plans to then be able to install them yourself. So, just take your time with them. Make sure your weld quality is good. Make sure that you know posts are well set in the ground, and uh, and also make sure things like drainage are all accounted for as well, because that's really important. Now, sheep handlers are uh, something that's becoming more and more prominent uh, on farm, and uh, and we we're getting a lot of inquiry about sheep handlers as as uh, um, both farmers you know, get a little bit older, and also OHS and uh, considerations come into play. So um, we've recently looked at uh, at sheep handlers for the third time, actually. Um, so we'd uh, we'd suggest that, that probably a, a bit of a run through that, uh, and I'm happy to walk through that now uh, in terms of uh, you know what to look for and, and how some of the handlers compared. So here's a, a test that we did uh, when we're looking at uh, sheep handlers. Um, we're looking at uh, you know. Build and design quality, um, maintenance, ease of operation, and adjustability. We also ran twenty sheep through and just did a quick time test to see um, to see how those sheep uh, would flow. Um, all the uh, all the handlers were using the the same lead up race to try and make that uniform as possible. And I would add that you know the, the ability of a sheep handler to put sheep through uh, comes back to the, the the quality of that lead race. And uh, and if you're going to make the investment in a sheep handler, it's worth thinking about lead up races. Uh, and making sure that uh, you, you've got good stock flow into that into that sheep handler. So as you can see, there's a, a certainly a range of prices um, uh, that that sheep handlers range from. Uh, it's a, sort of that eight thousand up to thirty thousand um, dollars, and also you know there's a variation in, in both uh, uh, build and design quality and, and also um, ease of operation. Um, there's a couple there uh, that aren't in that list, um, and, and some more unusual designs, um, and some that maybe have come from across the Tasman. So I'll just um, pop those in there uh, for those that, that might be interested. Uh, we've got the uh, Hecton, the, uh, the Perkins Drench Master, and also the Dan Darrigan sheep, sheep Handler there as well. So just looking at some of the uh, individual sheep handlers now, and uh, we'll start with the Clipex. Um, obviously, it provides good access to the sheep. Um, it's it's a, a half rotation of the sheep. Um, uh, there's a few little issues that we came across with uh, with pre-delivery, um, and uh, and there is a control box in underneath the machine that's actually pretty difficult to get to. So um, that said, um, uh, there's an uh, air outlet for accessories, and uh, and the auto release function was really good. Uh, combi clamp, uh, very clever engineering. It's quite simple, um, no power required. Just uses the uh, the weight of the operator. Uh, pretty quiet to operate. Um, in all reality, you probably need two people to operate the uh, the combi clamp, someone to push up um, because uh, you've got to have a person there to be able to clamp the sheep as it comes on. Um, and uh, and a couple of little uh, finishing things there that we think that might be uh, might be improved in terms of uh, capping those uh, cut section profiles. And moving on to the Gallagher Crutch and Dag, um, pretty uh, robust uh, unit this one. Uh, Galvanised construction impressed us uh, and also the simplicity of operation. It's a pretty easy machine to clean down. Um, we also found that uh, you know there's a, uh, plenty of access for, for operators and, and um, in terms of what could be better, um, perhaps that uh, top cylinder does obstruct things a little bit um, and uh, for a single operator it might be a little bit tricky to set up too, so, so maybe a couple of people required for, for setup there. Um, 
if you are tipping the animal upright, uh, that release isn't automated. So I think that's something that uh, that Gallagher are working on currently. Uh, the Peak Hill Handler. Um, this is a machine that rotates the, the, the sheep completely upside down, um, providing excellent access. Uh, look, it is well built and it's really adjustable. Um, just a, a little thing there with the balk gate. Um, the, the, the sheep following and, and about to lead into that Peak Hill Handler uh, can sort of push forward uh, a, a little bit and, uh, and create some issues. Uh, here we have the Peak Hill Industries Immobiliser, so a, a bit more of a similar design perhaps to uh, the combi clamp in that it clamps the animal in an upright position. Um, overall very simple, um, uses air to, for that clamping mechanism um, and, uh, and you can adjust both uh, the width and also the height of, the, of that clamp. It's got an electronic eye that detects where the animal is and once that's adjusted it is very consistent in terms of, of catching the sheep. Um, that manual uh, rear gate uh, which is optional does require a little bit of uh, coordination but once you've got the hang of it it's actually quite simple um, there's a mount pole um, uh, for overhead gear which potentially could get in the way but um, you know, can be shifted um, and we would like to see some bigger wheels on uh, on that uh, peak hill immobiliser just to be able to shift it in and out of the yards a little bit easier if it's uh, if it's going to be moved okay here we have the uh, Tapari HD4 it's a new machine um, uh, recently uh, released the market. It's got a four-way way draft on it. Um, a couple of new changes on this machine. Uh, we've gone away from toggles to a rotary switch uh, on the on the switching panel. Uh, there's a fast drench mode, so we're certainly looking forward to putting some uh, some sheep through this and just seeing how that goes uh, in the context of those earlier uh, 20 drench times that we showed earlier. Um, yeah, there's a, a new uh, back gate that's see-through, which should help uh, animal flow and some adjustable hock bars that we're looking forward to, um, to putting some sheep through as well. So uh, look, that's uh, one to look for. Um, yeah, as I say, it's new to the market. We haven't done a lot of testing with it at this stage. Now, one of the things we looked at in this latest sheep handler report is, uh, is the two bulk handlers. Um, when we talk about bulk handlers, we're talking about sheep running onto a race and that whole race elevating so that they're immobilized and uh, we're then able to undertake sheep husbandry uh, practices so without them sort of uh, moving around too much. And it does, lifting their feet off the ground does tend to lift their head also, which makes obviously drenching and tagging and things like that a lot easier. So the two different models, the, uh, the ProWay um, bulk handler and also the Murray bulk handler. Uh, we'll start with the ProWay as, uh, as per the picture here. Uh, all galvanized steel construction, uh, we've got an, a floor that Elevates uh, using a hydraulic uh, power pack, um, so there's a this needs to be connected to hydraulics. Um, the ProWay comes in a couple of configurations, uh, uh, both in a, a transportable and non-transportable mode or a fixed uh, sort of uh, design. Uh, this is the uh, six meter transportable design. It also comes in a, in a six or twelve meter. Uh, fixed design so uh, yeah so a couple of sets of wheels go on this and uh, and, it, and it jacks itself up uh, with a with a uh, towing a frame to be able to be transported uh, as this unit is uh, it's taken from farm to farm now the uh, the proway has a, a sliding rear gate um, uh, which uh, you know sheep run into uh, and then uh, over the floor which is uh, uh, basically chains or, or, or rails uh, that have uh, a polythene hose coating over them so that they don't cause uh, any damage or pinching um, and then that floor is is elevated. So the floor uh, comes up um, once the sheep uh, are in the race uh, like this. Uh, you can also see that uh, the floor then um, uh, is well off the ground and and, uh, and can be adjusted to any height that you want. Um, the, the the front gate is there released uh, with a with a handle from um, from anywhere along the race really. So uh, if you're drenching and starting from uh, from uh, front and then moving to the back, effectively what you do is get to the back uh, of the race and um, lower the floor and then open the gate and uh, shape it free to uh, to go from there. The other bulk handler is the Murray bulk handler. Um, so this is an interesting one. It's got two V race configurations. Um, actually uses a uh, an inflating tire to um, to uh, to lift the race uh, in with some pretty clever geometry. Um, do need to have uh, an air receiver there to be able to um, to to operate this uh, uh, with a you know a smaller sort of uh, compressor, if you like. Um, I think one of the things that's interesting with the Murray handler is that there's uh, there's always a lot of modifications whenever we see one of those on farms. Um, you know, uh, owners have, have done mods to it themselves. So uh, yeah, maybe a good uh, starting piece um, with option to uh, to modify things.
Uh, that's the uh, inflating tyre, as I mentioned, uh, which is part of the uh, the lift mechanism, uh, if you like. So uh, when sheep are in the race, uh, in the, well, there's two V races that run up the length of the machine. Uh, the tyre is inflated, that expands out, and uh, and then lifts up the uh, lifts up the two uh, two races, so that you can uh, walk along and, and and do drenching or earmarking or whatever you're doing. There's a couple of inserts you can get for uh, for smaller sheep and lambs um, that sit in over those two V's, which um, I guess narrow up the uh, uh, narrow up the the, uh, the lift um, portion of the of the, uh, of the handler. Um, and uh, these uh, particular use off shears probably could have done with that. And as you can see, they're still um, got feet on the ground in the elevated position. But I thought what what we do is just run through a couple of case studies now. Um, uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what people have done, and, and look, you know, this is a Digby stretcher set up at Cogenup uh, in WA. And you can see that there's some additional work to happen on the outer yards, and so just using some temporary fencing at this stage to get a feel for how that might work. And I think uh, that's one of the things that uh, is worth thinking about: um, is uh, is that if if you've got some uh, some alternatives or some some options or some expansion that you want to do. Uh, down the track, try it out with some temporary yards first and make sure you're happy with it, make sure it flows well and, and maybe try some alternatives before you um, set things in the ground uh, hard and fast. Uh, Jeff Lowe from uh, Victoria uh, has got an arrow quip set of yards here, uh, all gal. Um, uh, Jeff's been pretty happy with these yards and as you can see, uh, you know, that, uh, that bugle horn design obviously uh, built in again. Um, uh, lots of 360 degree gates there as well and, and just options for sheep flow. I think that's one of the things is, is having options for uh, for dropping uh, equipment in and out um, of, uh, of yards is is, uh, is really important. Uh, more temporary sort of style again, uh, Tim Zetto from um, Cogenup. Um, yeah, clip X and Midland portable or shiftable yards. Um, Again, uh, Tim was just working uh, in one small part of the, of the farm and uh, and wanted to uh, get these in place um, just to do a bit of uh, a bit of light work. Um, they'll probably uh, morph into something more permanent uh, down the track. Dion Wolford at Buckle Boo, um, nice set of uh, Atlex yards here. Dion uses uh, some uh, some uh, a scale uh, unit and an auto drafting unit. Uh, that can be brought in and out of the of, of the yards quite easily. Um, fantastic uh, integration of personnel gates, and that's one thing I think is really important in any yard design is is uh, remembering to incorporate those personnel gates. Uh, in the Atlex case, they've got dog flaps in the bottom, which are uh, which are excellent. And once the dogs get used to them, they tend to use them, and uh, and you know no jumping over over um, rails and, and and fences within the yards, which is uh, you know potentially uh, potentially causing them some injury. Uh, Ricky Mott, Dumble Young in WA, um, a set of yards here that have been adapted onto um, the, some outer yard, uh, outer yards on on a shed. Um, yeah, again, this is more a K rail style. So these were fabricated uh, in situ, uh, long lengths of um, of um, profile steel rolled on site, and then um, put into place uh, uh, with pre you know, pre installed uh, posts. Uh, and yards work beautifully well. Um, as you can see, they're undercover race uh, and some large outer yards that then feed into the wool shed. Amish Thorn, Cogent Up WA, uh, set of Aussie sock yards here with some really large uh, outer yards. Um, close to uh, to silos here if there was some to be some supplementary feeding down the track. Um, this is an Aussie stock yard set of yards. Again, it's a, more, a K rail style um, formed uh, profile uh, a rail. Um, set of yards and, and uh, Hamish has done a nice job here. This is the set of yards that had the uh, the uh, loading ramp sort of dug into the hill. Um, so uh, quite a neat uh, set up there of, uh, of Hamish's and, and also uh, feeds you know, into the, the wool shed there as you can see. Uh, this example came from Mount Elephant Station in Victoria. It's a set of Norton yards that have been refit with some solid panelling. Um, incorporating a Tapari auto drafter uh, and a combi clamp uh, handler. Um, this set of yards is all about flow, um, making sure that uh, animal flow is good and uh, certainly that solid panelling uh, aids that. Uh, a set of yards here built by Commander Agquip for Barry and Jared West at Coolan in WA. Uh, quite a big set of yards, a single race design. Um, Bugle horn feeding into that, uh, and some large outer yards incorporating diamonds so that uh, sheep can be shifted in between any of those pens. Um, really nice design. Obviously, leads into the 
the uh, shearing shed there. Uh, and as you can see, some, some large outer yards uh, have been sort of incorporated as well. Uh, one of the last sheep yard designs we'll look at is uh, this one from the Kieran Paul Marino stud in New South Wales. Uh, it's a Proway built set of yards, uh, and they've also got a Proway drafter uh, as well as a combi clamp handler. Um, beautiful set of yards, all under cover. Uh, yeah, really, really well done. Obviously, uh, you know these uh, these yards are quite expansive um, and a lot of surface area. Um, so you know the, the water tank there is uh, is a handy addition as well. Might as well use some of that that uh, roof area. Uh, so look, the, the Karen guys uh, have got uh, quite investment in uh, in livestock infrastructure, uh, and we'll have a look at their cattle yards in just a tick. Okay, this is the uh, the Karen Merino stud. Uh, this is their cattle yards, and uh, and as you can see, one of the interesting features in this is the uh, of this design is, is the central laneway that feeds around those outer pens um, in through a, uh, well, it's actually a hexagonal sort of a pen there uh, in the in the centre that uh, allows the, the flow of animals uh, either direction um, and in and out of any part of the yard. So uh, really interesting uh, feature and an interesting design. And um, and as you can see, that, that central uh, octagonal pen uh, allows movement of, of stock all the way throughout the yards and, and the laneway that feeds through is a really interesting design. So. Um, all the, the, the hard stand area under cover, which is where the, the main forcing pen is there, uh, with a with a rotary uh, for, forcing pen into the into the race, uh, and of course um, you know all the operations are pretty comfortably done under cover there. I thought we'd also touch on cattle crushes uh, while we're talking about yards. Just a couple of buying points, so a couple of things to look for if you are in the market for a cattle crush. Um, obviously, quality of construction. Uh, look at all the welds and the uh, and the finishing. Uh, make sure the, the the crush is fit for purpose. Uh, you know, if you're doing a lot of larger animals, make sure that it, that it will handle a larger animal well. Um, make sure all the mechanisms are easy to use. Uh, that releases are, are easy to use and, and fast to release. Um, make sure the adjustment for size is also uh, simple to use as well. So, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, we'll, we'll put uh, livestock through these crushes that are a range of sizes. We need to be able to adjust them accordingly. Make sure the length uh, in, in that context is also appropriate and um, make sure for for regular um, animal husbandry practices like vaccination, access is good. Um, need to be able to open those side gates uh, if an animal does go down so you can get them back up again on their feet. Um, and also make sure that the backing gates are easy to use as well. Sometimes uh, you know, they're the sort of things that uh, can make a, a crush more uh, simple to use or, or easy to use over another. We talk about the chin restraint, uh, make sure that uh, functions well and, and is also adjustable. Um, we need to be able to make sure that the machine is easy to maintain, uh, that the, that the uh, barred yoke is, is solid and, and well constructed and uh, you know, that's the area that often cops a pretty hard time in the life of a, a cattle crush. Uh, we also want to make sure that, that uh, the kick gate is also foot operated. So you don't want to be putting your head or your hands down there, you want to be able to kick that with your feet. Continuing along, we also want to make sure that uh, vet and rear gates can be opened from inside. So if you are in there or doing something, you need to be able to crack the gate open that you can actually access those uh, those latches from inside the uh, the vet uh, cage. Um, we want to be able to make sure that, that latches can be uh, unlatched under load. You know, if there is some force on them, um, you don't want to don't want that to be to be limiting and, and jamming the actual latch itself. So. Single-handed latch operation is essential. Two-handed latches, you know, you're always going to have probably something in your hand, so you want to be able to operate it with one hand. Um, we also want the ability to, to split those side gates or open them as one. So in a lot of cases, um, it's just a simple vertical latch that either locks those two gates together um, so that they can be operated as one or, or, uh, or split and, and operated individually. Um, there needs to be a sliding gate behind the vet cage so that uh, you, you can get in and, and out of there safely and, and make sure that bottom rail doesn't um, on, the, on the crush doesn't cause uh, wasn't the gap isn't big enough to be able to cause uh, uh, the hoof for a leg uh, entrapment um, that's the last thing we need we want to make sure that the floor is easy to clean out we also want to make sure that there's a nice clear view for cattle flow you know you, you don't want uh, uh, any obstructions or anything that, that might bore cattle uh, as they're running through. Okay, from a safety perspective, there's a couple of considerations we need to think about. We need to make sure that uh, there's nothing that sort of protrudes or, or pushes out from the, the crush that, that might hurt us or injure us as we're walking around it. Um, we need to make sure that uh, you know, those handles aren't at head height, that we're going to hit our head on them or, or you know, when we're 
we've got our head down, we're looking around, and we're not going to lift our head and hit it on uh, any of the handles. We need to make sure equally that, that head clearance is good inside the crush, and that means that it's high enough. Um, need to make, make sure that operation of the crush is quiet. Um, not only does it uh, you know, mean that cattle will be uh, less flighty, it also means that um, at the end of the day, the operator isn't uh, isn't deafened by a, a whole heap of noise going on there and can actually converse with other operators in the yard. Need to make sure the floor is non-slip. Um, we need to make sure that uh, all parts of the animal can be accessed that we need to access uh, safely. So you know that that might include small small latch gates that, that just give us access to the shoulder or the neck or whatever it may be um, without uh, having to open an entire large panel. Um, we want to make sure that there are escape routes for the operator if uh, if they get into trouble. Uh, that lower vet gate, as I said before, needs to be uh, kick shut, um, all footer operated. Uh, one thing we don't want to be doing is bending over and, and, and having to operate with our heads down uh, around uh, animals in a crush. Uh, levers should be uh, colour coded for safety and also fold away so that they don't cause any injury. Uh, and also padded grip handles are a good idea, they certainly make things uh, a little bit easier to hold and, uh, and, and also reduce the uh, propensity of those things to, uh, to cause us any injury. And that's all we have time for today and I'd like to thank you for listening to this talk. The Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of primary industries and regions South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, South Australian Sheep and Cattle Industry Funds and Sheep Connect South Australia.